Notice of is hereby given on the proposed financing by the Continental Village Volunteer Fire Department Incorporated that the Town Board of the Town of Phillipstown, Putnam County, New York, will meet at the Town Hall, 238 Main Street, Cold Spring, New York, in said county on July 6, 2017, at 7.30 p.m. prevailing time for the purpose of conducting a public hearing on the question of whether a tax-exempt lease purchase obligation should be issued by Continental Village Volunteer Fire Department Incorporated, known as the Fire Company, to finance the cost of the purchase of a new Marion custom pumper and equipment truck and chassis. The maximum, maximum aggregate face amount of the obligation to be issued with respect thereto will not exceed $340,000. At said public hearing, said town board of the town of Phillipstown will hear all persons interested in the subject matter thereof. Dated Cold Spring, New York, June 28, 2017, by order of the Town Board of the Town of Phillipstown, Putnam County, New York, by Tina M. Mirando, Town Clerk. Thank you, Tina. Um, so, this is uh, part of the process when the fire companies want to purchase a new piece of equipment, hold a public hearing, and with that, I'll open it up to the floor if anyone has any comment. I'm not uh, seeing a lot of people here for comment. <laughs> um, does anyone want to speak on behalf of the fire company? Say, I'll say a few words. Uh, John Puchak, I am finance committee. Um, yeah, this, this truck is basically to replace a 20-year-old uh, pumper who has uh, served us well for 20 years. Um, it'll be you know, 20 years old in next year, mm -hmm. which is when this truck should be ready for service. So. It's actually a good thing we have 10 years, you know, of a, an old, so like midway, or a truck we have in service now is a 10-year truck. So we'll have a truck that's going to be 10 years old and a truck that's going to be new. So we have, you know, it's a very good spacing of our equipment. So this is the way we plan it. We have two pumpers that we keep, uh, that we want to keep as a Class A status for the uh, benefit of the insurance, uh, you know, fire insurance people, uh, premium. So uh, that's our plan and hopefully it you know, meets with everybody's approval. So, John, you're financing 340 of the 540. Five, yeah, five. Nice. Uh, Something like is, that. That's truck close. Is, truck is 525, 365. Okay. 340 is a loan. Um, the fire department will supply the rest of the money for the chassis. Very good. Um, and uh, good luck with it. Five years is going to be the loan. Thank you. And when do you expect delivery? It's 10 months from the date of the signing of the contract. All right. So, you. We'll be mid, mid 18, yeah. Well, once everything's approved, then we'll sign and go from there. That's refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you going to do with the old one? Are you going to try to sell the old one? Absolutely, right? Yeah, as yeah. soon as the new one's in service, we'll decommission the old one and uh, we'll go up for sale. All right. Anything else from the board? Well, I'm just Excellent. curious what the, any idea what the value of the old one is, if anything at all. Once we get closer to getting a new one, probably within five months out of the new one being delivered, we'll uh, look into it and move forward. All right. Well, if there's no comment from the public and no further comment from the board, then I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with it. You can stay if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Red. How did I guess? It's gonna be Chicago style. <laughs> hey, sometimes you see green. Yeah, green. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be a lonely, lonely meeting here. <clears throat> You'll join us in the pledge. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I hope everybody had a good 4th of July. Um, the village looked like it was pretty crowded.
Nice, nice fireworks display. Yes, it was good fireworks. Quite a few yep. people down the river. It was uh, compliments of Groombridge Games. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. our thanks to the Groombridge family for that. Monthly town board meeting, June 1, 2017. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Weekly town board meeting of June 7, 2017. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Special town board meeting of June 23, 2017. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I vote aye. aye Committee reports, conservation board. Okay, Conservation Board met on June 13th, uh, an ongoing discussion with 17 Oxyoke. This is, um, recall, is in regards to uh, removal of trees uh, and uh, problems with the actual septic system, a change out in the actual uh, residential design and, and usage, uh, and also uh, the board also discussed changes which will impact um, the new septic and well was being uh, relocated due to the new driveway and garage that's going in. Um, the, uh, the little bit of history with this is, is an intermittent stream running alongside the property. Um, and obviously, uh, there's been problems because the septic failed. The Board of Health has been involved in this and uh, is obviously the lead. Um, and the board has been also, Conservation Board has been discussing uh, placement and so forth of the driveway, its length, its its impact uh, regards to those locations, but also to ensure that the uh, intermittent stream will not be impacted in the future because the uh, impact occur is occurring right there on Oxy Oak Road, and the property actually sits on a high portion of the roadway um, with the neighbors below who are obviously concerned with uh, runoff potential. Um, so that, that's an ongoing discussion, and uh, there's also a uh, pipe uh, drain size uh, discussion as well uh, being approved. Uh, the other part of the meeting uh, dealt with um, a hundred, uh, uh, another septic system repair within 100 feet. Uh, that's pretty standardized, although it, people should realize it, it's good, like these people come in, discuss it with the conservation board, find out what's involved, what mitigation has to be taken, like silt fence, um, and so forth, um, and then you, you, know, you can proceed from there. Um, the, uh, the biggest part of the meeting was, was what didn't happen, and that is the Homeland Towers. Um, the cell tower that uh, is being proposed up on Vineland Road. Um, we had about 30 people attending, which is extremely unusual for Conservation Board. Um, most of the people were there to discuss it overall. Obviously, it is before the Zoning Board as a lead. Um, there is obviously a Conservation Board concerns, and that is in regards to the steep slopes. That particular area has gone under a lot of uh, development and is in the process of development between Cold Spring Farm there, uh, the, the new uh, Mazzino um, uh, Italian Art uh, Center there, uh, and obviously the road itself has, has made some improvements. Um, I'm sure uh, John will talk more into some of the details of it, but uh, there is a state wetlands uh, adjacent to it and on the other side of the road. So it's also very important as well that we make sure that any construction or anything that occurs there is not going to have any kind of a significant impact on that. The, uh, the uh, both conservation and planning boards had a joint training session for our training session here on June 14th. Um, overall, it was, I feel, a success. It was very beneficial. It was the first time that both groups were ever together to discuss um, the, the different issues that are going on in the town in a generic sense. Uh, obviously, the boards are dealing with uh, conservation easements. Uh, Michelle Smith from Highlands um, um, Land was also there, uh, which uh, added to the conversation. It was, it was uh, handled, led by Susan Janechill of AKRF. Uh, but there was really um, a, a part of the discussion also that we had, which uh, you know, I discussed with them, is, uh, which is rarely asked for, but is, is currently going to be asked for as well, or in the process now, is a potential zoning change. Uh, which, of course, has a lot of factors that are involved in it to be, to be weighed and looked at and so forth. Um, but at the, the interaction between the groups were, were very good. So they certainly were in favor of uh, having another one. Uh, maybe we can get zoning in there, too. I know it's a lot of people, but um, this I got, idea I got from Cortland, I, I saw the two groups working together, and I was a little jealous of how well they got along, because when you personalize things, 
you know, then your communications that need to go, and they do, go back and forth with each other, now you can identify a face and a person. And if you need to make a phone call, you've got that personal contact already. So I, I think this is good and certainly encourage it going forward. Um, the next meeting is on July 11th. Thanks, Mike. Recreation. Um, I did not attend the Recreation Commission meeting because I was coaching Little League, so, but I did get a report from Amber. Amber it's not too long. No, it's not, <laughs> believe me. Amber reported that camp started on June 26. Enrollment is up across all weeks, and camp has gone well thus far. Thank you to Highland Country Club for the use of the pool again this year and to Haldane for helping provide trip transportation. The Depot Theater received permission from the MTA to repave the plaza at the Garrison Landing. Um, the commission, they've been working on this for a while, we met with them as well, uh, to put together a background check and coaches training policy. It will be presented to the town board in the very near future. Uh, the rec department is still looking for someone to hire as a park attendant. If anyone is interested, please contact Amber at the next um, at the rec department. Uh, the next meeting is July 25th at 7:30. Thanks, John. What's a park attendant? Um, the park gets abused on the weekends if nobody's there to monitor what's going on. And even if it's locked, people go over and they right. go in, and they've actually broke up games where people are in uniforms and they're having barbecues and and they tear up the field. So they want to invest some money in the fields and they don't want to do it if it's going to get destroyed. I mean, you get one rainy weekend and uh, if there's a soccer game with adults running around the field, it'll, it could destroy it quickly. So they're looking- I'm wondering about the remedies for that as far as starting to prosecute people for trespass. Right, but you know, there is people that keep an eye on it, but they're really looking for somebody to, you know, scoop through there a couple times a day on the weekend and, right. and even in week, uh, weekdays in the evening. So it is, for, it is a good job. Yep. For a retired, we were thinking a retired police officer or something, yeah. somebody that's not afraid to approach a crowd like that. So. Right. Some, some of the groups that I saw, they're out of town people. Yeah. They're out Most of town of people come, yeah, right, they're coming down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. All right. Thanks. Um, planning board. Okay, I attended the planning board meeting on June 15th, 7.30. Uh, old VFW Hall thanks Kim Connor for letting us use that building, and we continue to use it for the near future until this building has the elevators, as, as she indicated. Uh, it was a pretty small agenda, which is pretty nice uh, since the last several months have been pretty long. But anyway, the first item on the agenda was Index Industry and Design at 1602 Route 9 Garrison, New York. Applicant is seeking approval for proposed two-story masonry building in an addition with a full basement, storage, and garage to adjacent to his building. Uh, the applicant received his uh, ZBA approval. is now looking forward to move forward on his project. Uh, there's a few minor technical issues that still need to be worked out, uh, but a, hub a public hearing is scheduled for May 20th, which is the next uh, planning board meeting. Uh, the, the board also passed a non-listed, uncoordinated seeker action. That's the first time I've heard him use that type of technology for the seeker, but that's what they've been using lately. Second thing on the agenda was Rockman Bursquette, uh, 67 Old West Point Road, Garrison, tax map 82-2-32 and 1 and 2. Revised drawings for the proposed site plan and a new residential estate, which include a main house, a detached garage, guest house, pool house, indoor, outdoor pool. The project will now be done in several phases, uh, and it's going to take over six years for them to build this. this. Um, but the planning board is in, wants to inform the applicant that the um, a permit, a billing permit, only lasts for two years. So I have to renew their permits every every two years if this project is going to take six years. Again, an unlisted, uncoordinated seeker was passed. Last on the agenda was Hudson Highland Reserve. As you know, they've been through the planning board for quite some time now. Uh, this is a 200-acre subdivision with 25 homes on it, with an equestrian center. Um, last month, I reported there was a joint project, a joint report between Titan Engineer Ron Gaynor and ACRF. That was w reviewed again last at the last meeting. Uh, they rehashed a lot of different things over there. He also talked about possibly changing some different ways of the, well, the um, how many houses they could, the, how many houses they could actually get in. There's still questions regarding about that. So there was a lot of discussion going on. So they decided at this point in time. The best thing would be to do is schedule a workshop, a workshop for everyone. So a workshop is scheduled for July 13th at 7.30 in the VFW Hall. Next meeting, the a board was agenda at 8.45. Next meeting will be on July 20th, 7.30 VFW Hall. All 
right. Thanks, okay. Bob. <coughs> Zoning. The Zoning Board met on June 12, 2017. There were two items on the agenda. Homeland Towers for our 5,610 square foot fence compound containing a 180 foot monopole cell tower and related equipment. And Mike discussed that, it's on Vineyard. Um, the application was reviewed, but they needed to continue reviewing the application. So the continuation will be on July 10th, uh, 2017. Uh, second item was a referral from the planning board, 200 Lake Surprise Road for a subdivision for the McHugh property located on Lake Surprise Road. And that's scheduled for public hearing, public hearing on 710 also. So um, that'll be the next meeting, Monday night. Thanks, John. Highway. Okay, the highway report. <clears throat> Phillipstown Town Board members, Carl present the highway superintendent, work performed by the Phillipstown Highway Department for the month of June. The highway crew spent the majority of June grading dirt roads, filling potholes, blacktop patching, and performing repair work to curbs and gutters. In order to provide safe, clear visibility on all Phillipstown roads, annual mowing and hedge trimming has started. We ask cooperation of all residents to please keep grasses, bushes on your property along the road trimmed back and off the roadway. Also, numerous missing street signs have been replaced. The highway department is seeking candidates for a part-time labor position for the summer months. Uh, this person must have a clean license and be 18 or older. Applications can be picked up at the highway garage. Work continued and is moving smoothly on the Avery Road bridge deck replacement project. The bridge precast deck panels have been delivered and installed. A reminder to residents that the bridge will remain closed while the contractor continues work on the remaining work items. Backfilling, guardrail, installing, installation, concrete ends of the side deck panels and paving. No through traffic will be allowed until completion of the project approximately July 28th. Permits from the DEC have still not been received in order for the work to begin on Manitou Station Road. The department received approximately 40 phone calls regarding road complaints and issues for the month of June, and the highway department spent roughly $6,100 in June for vehicle maintenance. Above submitted, Carl present the highway superintendent. How long has DEC been holding us up on that? Put some time now. Oh, yeah, we thought this early spring we were going yeah. to, I remember we were even thinking, fall. But the, yeah, this was yeah, the thing from last spring, fall. Right. Yeah, going on like you guys have no clue months. that there is a construction season, and if you don't catch it, we're not going to get it done. You know, they're not going to be the ones out there. I know Ron's been following up all the time with him, too, as well. I know, well. I just wonder what the what's, foot what's dragging the hold, is. Yeah, what the holdup is. I had to give him a call. All right, thanks, John. Uh, building and land, what's... I have a report for the Dahlia House. So um, I spoke to Mike today. The structural repairs and the framing is done on the main house. There was a lot of termite damage around the box beam, which had to be pulled off and repaired. So that's done. The foundation for the addition is also completed. Um, and they started the electrical underground service today. They're going to start working on the foundation repairs to the main house on Monday. And then the framing for the addition will also start next week. Um, I have to meet with Mike either tomorrow or Saturday to go over a couple other items. But it seems to be moving along. Good. He was away for a week, so with his daughter. Uh, all right. Yeah, they went to uh, Milan. They were Italy for the softball, softball trip. Well, that's good news. Thanks. Do you want to discuss the plans? Yeah, what about here? Well, I mean, I, we don't have anything up. Well, he gave us the preliminary stuff. Didn't right. He? Right. So we we met with the architect, uh, Justin Caker from Highland Architecture, last week. Was it last week? Or? Yeah, something like that. Yes, yeah, so about a week ago to discuss the options for the... Uh, putting in the elevator and reconfiguring the stairs. They came up with a, you know, a layout that's really, uh, I think it's gonna work well, where we'll have the doors and the landing will be in the center of this room, the elevator will come in over there, and the uh, staircase will come up on this side. But it seemed like a really novel idea yeah. the way they laid it out. That's not something I would have thought of. No, it's kind of like <laughs> a center foyer that will open up both at the lower level and the upper level. Right, so, so the we'll, elevator will come up and open on the same side. Right, so. we'll be able to see straight through and out that window again. Right, We're going to put bottom. a handicap bathroom up here. Right. The and staircase then will be uh, up and back over in that corner. Yeah, and redo the bathrooms downstairs. Along those lines, too, I spoke to Ron Gaynor today, inquiring as to when the uh, bid documents for these windows will be ready to go out. He assures me we'll have them by Tuesday. 
So then maybe next Wednesday we can. Don't forget we need to add one. Right. The code analysis that Justin and Heather did from uh, Highland Architects, we can remove that that, um, door. that door and Heavy the fire escape. get that rickety fire escape off that we really don't need. And go back to a window. To a window. And then make some improvements in this room also. In this room will we'll have a wall across the back. So we're making headway there, so that's good. Don't miss the plastic on the windows. I think everyone will miss that. <laughs> that we're going to keep. Oh, good, good. That's, that's historic. It's antique. antique. Yeah. That is antique right plastic. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully um, once we finish next door, and that's supposed to be this November, then we'll start moving ahead with this probably next spring, really. We'll be doing it in the middle of the winter. And uh, that'll be a big improvement for this building. Also, getting the elevator in will be a, a major step forward for us. Cemetery committee. Okay, cemetery committee met on June 13th. I want to commend the committee for uh, placing a number of flags uh, at both Cold Spring cemeteries prior to the uh, per, the um, march. Uh, and also, if you haven't seen the Cedar Street Cemetery in the last month or so, I would uh, welcome you to please go over. You're going to see a dramatic difference. Um, our rest, we did over a ten thousand dollar restoration to Cedar Street. It just worked. Uh, normally, I don't usually, for the first phase of the year, I don't like to, but everything fell in place. Um, Cedar is a little bit different than Mountain Avenue in the sense that there's a series of, of graves. A lot of people put like three together, and so you're, you're repairing three, and you also have to do the foundation. So, uh, so there's a more intricate work, actually, believe it or not, at the Cedar Street uh, than there was in Mountain in certain cases. Uh, but it looks tremendously better. Um, we also, thanks to Phillips Town Tree, uh, I really wanted to get that tree out of there. There was a dead tree right along the road and, and to trim the tree alongside of it. Um, more, more so for the kids' sake than anything else because the kids uh, stand over there in that area and that one tree died real fast in the front section there. So I uh, thank them for taking that down. Um, we're also working on a sign for the Mountain Avenue uh, Cemetery. Uh, Mike Robinson of the group is working. Kim Connors, thanks for the video assistance uh, as well and design, graphic design. Uh, we will run it by the um, Kathleen Foley for historic. Uh, but Mike is really pretty much um, designing it pretty well. I, th I think there won't be any issues there. And it won't be really a permanent sign. But this, again, is our movement to try to get people to you know, look at it and realize that if we're going to really be able to make some real strides, such as the General Morris Crypt and so forth, we're going to really need some private funding. Um, we are taking a look at trying to uh, finalize the, the forms and so forth and the design that, we'll, uh, that Tara will help us put up on the town page uh, to advertise. Um, there's, we have certain restrictions. We can't do GoFundMe and certain things. I've spoken to Susan about it. So, so we have limitations, but um, we, we are trying to encourage people to send in donations because they will go towards uh, that. Or if we also want to try to identify some people uh, in town that have their ancestors here that maybe they would consider uh, contributing and that money would go directly to repairing those particular graves. Um, so that's, that's another thing. And the school kids have been involved with Adopt a Grave and so forth. Uh, they've been involved and uh, actually we expect maybe an additional grade to be involved in the fall which will be as good as well because they're our future and they're going to be, we're going to be handing this off to them one day. So it's good to get them involved now. Uh, we're in, our next meeting is July 11th. Thanks, Mike. Okay. All right. Okay, the first item on the agenda, a resolution authorizing the lease purchase of a 2018 International 7, 7, uh, 7500 series truck for the highway department in the amount not to exceed $195,802. Um, uh, the town attorney reviewed everything. Everything's in order. All right. <clears throat> well, this is in the budget. Um, highway works with trucks, so they need <coughs> trucks. So, uh, there's not much to discuss here. Any comment from the board? Just, this is, this is going to be four-wheel drive this year, right, I believe? This one? Think so. no, I don't think, think it would so. be identified okay. if it was. All right, so <coughs> I know we kind of had discussions about being four wheel, not four wheel. Okay. Yeah. Now the four wheel drives are a lot more expensive. Oh, yeah. A lot more money. Yeah. It'll say 7,500 four by four. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right. That's the only question I have. Yeah. 
All right, could I get a motion uh, approving so approving resolu resolution? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Councilman Flaherty. Aye. Councilman Leonard. Aye. Councilman Van Tassel. Aye. And I vote aye. Next item is a resolution authorizing Supervisor Shea to sign the Section 147F approval and written agreement and the chief elected officials approval in connection with the lease purchase of equipment for the Continental Village Fire Volunteer Department. Okay, earlier tonight, probably about half an hour ago, we had a public hearing with regard to this. We didn't get a lot of input from the public, but Continental Village uh, Fire Department was well represented and gave uh, some brief remarks replacing this is replacing a 20 year old piece of equipment by the time it comes in which is the sort of expected lifespan of a, a large truck like that. So they're also on a staggered schedule. They have two, so they'll have one that's gonna go another 10 years. So they're staggering these things. It helps lessen the blow when you have to buy a large piece of equipment, but also make sure you're always gonna have one on hand. So it seems like it's pretty well thought out. Um, I don't know there's anything else from the board? All right, could I get a motion on a resolution authorizing me to sign the uh, section 147F? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. The next item is a resolution authorizing Supervisor Shea to sign a parade permit for the Walter Hoving Homes event scheduled for July 15, 2017 and waive the fees associated with said permit. Anything for Beth? Uh, this is something we do every year. We're glad to be able to do it, and we're also happy to waive the fee. So, could I get a motion authorizing me to sign the parade permit for Walter Hoving Home? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Next item is a discussion with regard to the Putnam County Fire and EMS Mutual Aid Plan. Anybody here representing? Moving right along. Yeah, this is something I've never seen this before at this desk. I, no. I don't know why we've been asked. Have we ever reviewed their mutual aid plan? We don't usually. It was received on, and Dottie gave it to you and Greg Warner. Yeah, I know, I yeah. saw it, but I was just, I, I've never seen us have to review it before. It's just something maybe the new commissioner is having that all the towns review it just so they're aware of what's going on. But, Maybe I'll give them a call tomorrow and ask them why. I mean, this is reviewed and adopted by all the emergency services. I've done it with the fire department, but right. I've never seen it done by the town before. Does he but want I mean, it? something as far as mutual aid, everybody involved in agree, agrees to the mutual aid right. plan. Yeah, they all have to sign yeah. Yeah. We always right. have a plan in place right. already. So maybe this is just to let us know what the yeah, overall plan one. is. I see resolutions that the fire company, EMS, right. should sign. Company, yeah. But I think... Um, well, review the plan and pass a, a resolution formally adopting it. So in the last page is the sample resolution. But each fire department involved in this has to adopt a resolution oh, they all get it and right like i said i've seen it before because the chief reviews it and then the well in north islands the district would approve it which i'm sure garrison would do and maybe because it's continental village is an independent and cold spring but i don't know i'll call them tomorrow i mean i don't think but there's any rush this one resolution to say by resolution after public hearing the governing body of yes. each yeah we're supposed to have a public county hearing. city that's why I put it on for discussion to yeah. find out what we need to do with this. So we should schedule a public hearing on this, right? It says have a right? Yeah, hearing. that'd be a first. Yeah. Page 23. <laughs> Never seen. Yeah, I see it. <coughs> so I'll give you Anthony a call tomorrow, and I guess we'll have to schedule a public hearing. Looking forward to that. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll, uh, Look forward to hearing back from the Councilman Van Tassel on what he finds out. Karen Ertle. Yeah, she's excited. Burst in. 
how are we going to set up a climate smart commission do you have candidates for us or well as you know when we originally passed the resolution the garden club had a had a 21 list uh, names 21 names of people uh, i've since heard from two or three additional people uh, but i think there needs to be um, i've been sending the board some information on from dec on suggestions um, and i do think there needs to be some uh, discussion among the board in terms of you know what this commit what this task force would be charged with what you would hope that they could accomplish and contribute to to you in terms of your information uh, what objectives we would be setting as a town to for them to try to meet and to explore um, so I think the next step would be you know a workshop or a discussion with interested parties um, one of the things I've, I've thought about is whether uh, we, we've kind of talked about informally the numbers, you know, how many people should be on, what should the stakeholders' representation be. Um, so all of these questions, I think, have to be answered as well as their mission statement um, in terms of what are they trying to do, what are they trying to help you do, because that's really what this task force would be, um, a community working with the government to say, you know, how do we do this, how, do, how best do we accomplish these things. So since there are multiple goals involved in this, and you have to go, I believe there's like 10 or 11? Well, there's nine, I believe, nine. that we're supposed to move forward on, some right. of which is setting the task force. Right. So it seems like the size of that task force could be dictated by the number of goals you want to take on at once. Mm -hmm. cool. So if you can break it up into different committees, mm -hmm. then, you know. The key is the chair. Mm -hmm. in the key, my, the key is somebody, the chairman of any, any yeah, group. Somebody who really wants right. to. Well, there was a gentleman who sent us. I'm not familiar with him. I've started to ask around. I don't know if any of you know him. Um, someone who did send us a resume and said, I'm, I'm interested and I even would consider, you know, leading the committee. Um, you know, I have no problem being on it and being a driving force, but I think that someone younger right. should should really take on the charge and, and uh, you know, perpetuate right. what's going on. Um, but again, I think it depends upon what that constituency of that task force looks like. And then possibly the task force can even decide who will be the best among them to lead them. Right. Um, so there's any number of ways it can go. It's just... Just in terms of timing, I'm thinking that July and August are not the best time to be asking people to do anything. Right. So I don't know if we want to wait until September when everybody sort of gets their head back in game. We can lay out some groundwork between now and then. Right. Maybe set some objectives, define what it is this you know, task force will be doing, and then maybe even advertise for you know people between now and then. We could run an ad. Right. And yeah, I think it's important that we know what we're asking people to do right. before we go out and say, you know, do you want to join this? And it's right. like, well, what are we doing? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, part, of, part of it also, and obviously I, I went through your material, obviously is to set up, but you obviously have to, you have to benchmark. You have to see where you're at as a town currently in these areas. Where do you think you want to go? You, you should be referring to your comprehensive plan and your town documents to, to see where you're at that way and, and to assist you. Um, obviously. Uh, the new building, because uh, obviously a big thing is saying take a look at yourselves first, mm -hmm. take a look at the municipalities, and obviously uh, I think uh, we're in good, I think good shape that way. So that'll be a plus. That's down, but obviously you know it starts you off in my in my opinion with this by taking a look at yourself, but then you expand out to the community, which will of course be a tougher thing mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then the board gives direction to exactly where. You know, as we said before, you know, what task force are created, what's, mm -hmm. what goals are they given, and, and so forth, creating a mission so that they, statement so that they understand what we're looking to go with, and that can be a starter. That can be a, a phase one mission statement, and then when you're finished with that, right. um, there will be changes, obviously, in a few years. The comprehensive plan will be revised, and that could, could necessitate some changes from, from that standpoint. So, And the, um, there's no reason, to, it, depending upon the charges and the committees, there's no reason as long as you have a core committee, it could also be a fluid thing where no one has to commit to four years, you know, they yes. could be just working on a project. Right. When that project's done and reported on, you know, they can right. either stay on and go to another project. So again, you know, I just say it's, it's really, it's now your vision, 
in terms of what do you want to accomplish in terms of reducing greenhouse gases, waste, et cetera, um, and, and how can this task force help you to identify those things? One of which may be the self-evaluation. And DEC um, Europa has, you know, McGovern has offered to help us with that. Um, we, we, I suggested to Nancy and Mike that we kind of hold off on the grant. There was a significant grant possibility, but I think we were getting the horse before the cart. Um, and if it's another year we wait for that, then, you know, we might as well do it well rather than do it, you know, not at all. So, um, but I think, you know, the task force now, a lot of it, as I say, is your vision in terms of how do you see this group of stakeholders from the community working with you to accomplish, you know, objectives and goals that you guys set. You also uh, sent us on um, documents regarding to Vermont, for instance, there, VCAN? Um, I sent you in the, in the one document, it showed you as an example of a mission statement, which was a Vermont mission statement. Okay. Um, that's right off the DEC well, website. I was just kind of curious if you felt personally that Vermont is like the, the, oh, the persons the, that are like, ahead here. And, you know, obviously the disadvantages, of course, grants and, and initiatives taken in Vermont is not going to be the same thing in New York. But. Well, I think we have Orange County. I know Orange County has set a very aggressive objective for themselves um, in terms of the reduction of greenhouse gases. Right. Yeah. And I think that one of the things we might do in this summer planning, if we go that route, is to um, you know reach out to them and say, you guys have been doing this now for, for two years, three years, whatever it may be. Um, they've set this aggressive objective of 80 percent cut. I mean, that's significant um, and they obviously have a plan yes. now they've joined with other climate smart communities to accomplish this uh, so there's an article somewhere in something all the trees we cut down um, but there's somewhere in those papers too an article from the Chronicle in Orange County on Orange County's objectives in terms of the climate smart um, but I think you know uh, as, as Supervisor Shea is suggesting I think it's a good idea to take these this time to either work together, you guys meet and decide what it is you want and what would the mission of this group be. Uh, everything can always be modified and changed and, and tweaked, but I think you need that before you come out to the community and say, you know, this is what we're looking for because we don't know what we're looking for yet. Right. Right. Thank you. Also, I think that sort of the model of when we did the comprehensive plan, that worked really well, dividing people into groups, setting a task that's you know, not overwhelming something they can achieve because mm -hmm. with the comprehensive plan, there was probably 40 or 50 people involved in that. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's why it was. Right. The numbers dwindled as it. They did as it got out. completed, though, yeah. but it did get completed. Right. I mean, it was a. Quite an initiative, yeah. Yeah, it was an incredible document. Yeah, and, and also, the, you know, all the research that went into it is still valid, probably most mm -hmm. of it, and the demographic research and all that. Mm -hmm. Probably some of that could be drawn on to see, to set a benchmark for now. Mm -hmm. So. That'd be a yeah, good you thing. always want to have more people to start with than you'll end with, because well, you know you're going to lose some. <laughs> you know how that goes. <laughs> yes. Hopefully, we'll gain some of these groups yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and their friends. They'll bring their friends along. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we're not lim we're we are not limiting the task force to have to be town residents, correct? No. Right. And one of the things I don't know, you may want to entertain. One of the things we've talked about when we went to How Green Is My Town, uh, the possibility of of the opportunity for for students, you know, high school students to participate in some way and be part of, you know, local government and doing what's happening here and, you know, it, so it can be an outreach if that's where you want to go. It can be, you know, constituents. Um, the gentleman who did send the, the resume, I did send back a note to him saying that Cold Spring and Nelsonville will help us if they sign on in terms of Climate Smart. And I suggested that he go to Cold Spring and talk to them about were they, as a village, you know, wanting to sign on as a climate smart community. I did not hear back. Um, so as I say, I have, you know, started Maybe to explore. Because obviously we're gonna, we're probably gonna end up with people from the villages on our task force. Yeah. So probably at some point we can, uh, if they sign on, we can coordinate that. Right. Yeah. Right. I brought it up at the last meeting about what we what okay. we did. What was the uh, reaction? Not too much. Not, they didn't really get too many questions or about it at all, to be honest. Well, I did oh. offer him. I said, if you, you know, if, if I can help, if you want me to come in to a meeting or something and explain, you know, I'm happy to, you know, to help them to understand. Or Europa McGovern, I'm sure from the state would come down and talk to them about it. Though I think sometimes she knows more right. than we know <laughs> to start, so it can be overwhelming. All right. Well. Okay. 
we'll start sifting through things and maybe I'll give a call to Europa just to have a conversation with her in the next week or so. And I think we should go ahead and advertise for names at least to get a list of names because right now we have no formal well, anything. Well, involved. we have some names that we can reach out. These right. are the people in our meeting that we have numbers and right. emails that we, if you want to, we could reach out to them at some point. Yeah, it would be helpful to at least send yeah. them an email. Right. Yeah. And, and, so, and that was only at the annual meeting. I didn't yeah. send out anything to the whole constituency uh, from the Garden Club, but uh, Mike Roush has also told me that he would participate in it. Okay. Um, uh, you know, and I've had some other discussions. I'm sure Jason's. Um, I don't know what their official name is, but Jason Angel's group. Long Haul Farm. Yeah, Long, yeah, Long Haul, but it has a, another name to it. Um, oh, the Citizen Soapbox. Something, you know, that, that I'm sure they would want to have constituents on it. And then I think, as you know, Mike has said, you need, you need, you know, business people. It's, it's everybody getting mm -hmm. together yeah. on this. Yeah. Right. So. All right, well, I can send out, I have those guys' uh, email, mm -hmm. so I can also reach out to them. And you have mine, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we can get things at least moving along. So come September, we can start to coalesce and, and get the group together. Hopefully by then have some objectives in mind and then move forward. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Anybody going to be around? What's, yeah. what's vacation schedule looking like for everybody? I'm going away the end of July. I am as well. The end of July and then the last week of August as well. So. so are we going to move uh, next month's meeting? You mentioned too that. We're going to have to move uh, August. the August meeting. To when? Um, the following week after the that? The following week, Thursday. yeah. 10th? Yep. So 8th. Because I don't think it, nobody, nobody's going to be here. <laughs> Nancy's going to be away. I'm going to be away. Bobby's going to be away. I mean, nobody. Nobody, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to do any workshops in the next couple of weeks, I'll be here. If, we, if you want, it's up to you. Well, anybody have any burning issues right now? Do we want to get together with Mike? Or, I mean, you're going to talk to Mike during the day? Yeah, right. no, I'll, I'll meet with him during the day. It's easier. You know, we're going to have to meet. Once we get the window bid documents, we're going to want to meet and get authorize the clerk to advertise that's the only thing i want to keep moving along so yeah the other issue I have, as you know is about the phone system i, I right. got a couple more quotes today too so i'd like to put them all together and review them a little bit more and, and then make come up with a decision recommendation, between, a recommendation and see right. what's the best way to go forward but it, as you know we're in a dire pretty rough shape i don't have a phone yeah. Oh, it phone. was you or Dottie, so I figured Dottie would have the phone. She's here a little True. bit more. So yeah. If you want her, you want your phone, I have it switched. No, I, no. I just go over and we lean into it together. It's like singing country western. You got a string and a can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got a bird. <laughs> Depending on which phone system we decide with, we could probably get something in here relatively quick. There's a lot of different options that we have, but I did, like I said, I got two other quotes today, which were a lot lower than what I had, so I got to really take a very serious look at those. Yeah, see what the uh, what's included. Right. So. Okay. And then the building next door. Well, I talked to the alarm system people. They're mm -hmm. gonna be, they probably stop by today to see what they need to do there. Uh, I also, you know, I'm gonna run the multiple cable between here and there to get our data and phones connected there as well. Right. Uh, I did. We need to come up with a solution on exactly where they want to terminate all the, the, you know, network cables and phone wires and yeah, all that in, in that building. In that building. Cause, yeah. Yeah. So if you want to go in the basement, we can, but yeah. just, we got to, you know, I, I was talking to Kevin about that, so he's got to make a decision where he wants to put them. Uh, yeah, basement's fine with me. All right. Yeah. I'll talk to Mike. That was one of the questions Mike had about the alarm and the phone system. Where we but the alarm guy, I think, stopped by today. So okay. In fact, and I, you know, I explained what we're, what we're doing over there. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for working on that, Bob. Um, we're supposed to, this is just one piece of news also, supposed to receive a decision on the appeal from RNV, the transfer station, illegal transfer station across from Magazino, yes, Ventura. 
this week. So Friday's coming. If not this week, early next week. You know, we had the court decision decided in our favor. They they filed for an appeal. So we'll, we'll find out within the next four or five days, I believe, whether that appeal will go forward or whether the judge is just going to reject the appeal. I'm hoping he rejects the appeal because we have to go into another appeal. It's just going through the whole case again. So if we, if we get good, are they going to shut them down? I mean, that pile is bigger now than ever. Yes. If, if the appeal is denied, we're going to get an injunction, and that place is going to get closed down. It's ridiculous. I mean, he's not even trying to work with us. It's, no, just, it's, it's saying, basically it's, a thumb in the eye at this point. I, I mean, he's, he's also threatening the state wet, wetlands right behind him. Big I have time. That the collapses. DC they should be. I'm surprised. Four times. I'm surprised four that. times. Yeah. I'm not threatened. It's filled. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Okay. That, I, but I can't believe D.C. is not doing something about it. I've called D.C. four times, not gotten a call back. Not once. Called the investigating officer four times. Nothing. So <laughs> it's just, I don't know, I'll try, I'll try again. But They were there right across the street. From I saw them out there that yeah. one day yeah. talking yeah. I mean, you know. Them. Right. So, and I know there's violations. If there's no violations there, then yeah. there is no, no law. But we're hoping to put that to bed soon because a lot of people are concerned also i i did meet with um homeland towers here with steve gaba to talk about that project and again look at alternatives including co-location including you know maybe setting it somewhere else the setting right now i know people are upset about it but as far as visual impact that spot versus the landfill the landfill has no trees, you know, it's just going to be, it'll be very visible at the recycling center. Well, do did they, did they offer any possibility of camouflage? I mean, which is in our code, it's encouraged. No, some, they, some people have willing, done a good job with it. They're willing to yeah. do all sorts of things. They're willing yeah. to consider, they're going to go back and talk to Verizon about lowering it, mm -hmm. because right now it's, I don't know, some people say about 40 feet above the tree line. 180 feet. That's well above. The yeah, and they did the balloon test. And so the question was, we asked, there. you know, does it need to be 180 feet tall? Where is the documentation that is, that establishes the need? Mm. It's the other yes. thing we're asking for at this point, saying, and to look at the alternative siting. So they're going to provide some of this documentation. I was a little surprised that establishing the need. Is sort of an after the fact thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's it. They say that they could put on another other business, and that seems oh, yeah. to be a viable reason you can do it. Yeah. You know, you don't have to say yeah, it. Yeah, they're obviously they're big money makers, and look, yeah. that's their business. I, yeah. you know, I'm not begrudging anybody of their business, but it, we really need to know <laughs> that all the diligence has been done, the due diligence has been performed before this thing gets approval. You know, we had the discussion, look, this isn't going away. We could have put it at, we can still put it, there, right? put it at the recycling center, but, you know, I don't think that's going to make anybody happy. I, you know, and I, I can understand people up there, as you drive up Vineyard Road, there's going to be no right missing there. it. No. <laughs> no. But they, they did the balloon test, they have pictures. How many towers we have now in Fosetown? Two? I'm a little, no. I know when. Two, three? How many are there? I think there's six. There's that many? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah, the one at Schubert's. Schubert's. You got yep. the one down there in Garrison Pass. You got one at 301. Paul Hemus. Paul Hemus. Paul Hemus, right. There's yeah, one, one at 403. Garrison. Yep. I'm trying to think of where else. It's hard to believe there's any dead spots. I know we're mountainous, but still. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's all line of sight still. Yeah. But, so we'll see what comes to that. Um, just to, to let people know that we we are aware of the concerns and we are working on it. So, all right, uh, we're not going to schedule anything for now, though. Okay. But we can uh, keep the emails going with regard to the phone system, regard to pro progress on the building next door. Um, I'll let you know when Ron submits the big docs for the windows. Item is the code enforcement mo monthly report. Thirty-nine thousand six hundred and forty-four dollars were the fees collected. Forty-nine 
total number of permits issues, one new one or two family dwelling, um, nine alterations, additions, or repairs to residential building. One of those were renewed. Uh, one addition, alteration, or repairs to commercial buildings. All other permits, pools, sheds, decks, plumbing, HVAC, 39 were issued. One was a renewal. Uh, 25 COs issued. Three stop work orders issued. And there were five inspections of commercial occupancies. Those were for fire. Uh, projects of significance was um, the Village of Cold Spring Building Department, all span completion on Route 9, and 5 Winston Lane, new construction. You know, and this is just an anecdotal observation, but it seems that people are a lot more willing to come in to get permits all of a sudden. I mean, when you have 49 permits issued in a month, I think people are very comfortable with Greg. Uh, I get nothing but good feedback. Um, in speaking about the building department, since Linda has moved over there, we are going to have to interview. That's something we should probably schedule for next week. Advertise. We, have to advertise. we already did advertise. Oh, we did. Let's interview next Wednesday. What do we have? Two candidates so far? Two. Two. So let's go ahead and do it next Wednesday at uh, 7 30. Is the fisherman going to be back by then? <laughs> All right, so we'll next, see for, next Wednesday. We'll have to get up on the widow's walk and take, yeah. take a look. Did you want Ann to take care of the sending those up? Yeah, if she could. So 7:30 and 7:45, or yeah, 7:30, 7:45. That's fine. All right. Anything else from the audience? Karen, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Yes. Um, vacancies. I think this is a first. Oh, okay. Zero. 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 We'll be starting with conservation next Tuesday. Yeah. That's good. I think it's going to be a good addition to the to the board there. Approval of vouchers, general. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Highway. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Continental Village Park District. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Continental Village Water District. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. I vote aye.